Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Recently, I went on a camping trip uh, for about three days. Um, a lot of thoughts came to my mind, a lot of things, maybe some level of clarity of thought came to my mind and putting the pieces of life together and understanding our situation thinking about our situation, trying to, you know, we were camping in a place where it was all nature. One thing I realized when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, rabbataha, when the mother will give birth to her master. And yatatawaluna anil bunyan, and when they will compete in tall buildings. So what is the relationship between giving birth to your master and tall buildings? You see, modern cities are very different from cities before modern times. In the olden times, cities, they never got rid of nature. The Zamzam water was still there. The hills of Medina were still there. No one removed any part of nature. Nature was not just part of decoration that you put on the roadside to make things look good or for parks. There were animals even in the city. You still milked the cow even in the city. You had hens in the city. And so the transformation that has occurred between modern cities and what was before that is something very very significant to understand you see cities of the modern times have been built to to harvest godlessness and to harvest sin every city is a sin city every city is a sin city and this is why when you try to uh, discipline the kids in a city, when you try to break magic in a city, when you try to do anything good in a city, it only goes halfway because it's infested with this satanic, uh, you could say, shadow or culture that is so overwhelmingly powerful that there's no way to break from it. And so no matter what parents do, they're going to get disobedient kids. And no matter what parents do or spouses do, they're going to have more fights in the city than if they're outside the city. People are going to be more jealous in the city than outside the city. People are going to be, uh, it's going to be harder to break magic inside a city than outside a city. It's going to be harder to break the evil eye inside the city than outside the city. It's harder to stay away t from temptation inside the city than outside the city. Every aspect of Islam becomes easier when you leave sin city. And every city is a sin city. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ There will be not one city except we will destroy it before the day of judgment. Because... Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys every city when it's the people there are oppressors. And injustice, being in a, in a place of injustice is so bad that Islam requires it and mandates you make hijrah from a place of injustice. And so anyway, there will be not one city except we will destroy it before the day of judgment. Or we will severely punish it. And in these cities that make these tall buildings, and in these cities that create a culture of godlessness, and in these cities in which temptation is ripe, and in these cities in which the newer thing is better than the old. You go to the camping site, and you know, so people have to cut wood. Now the elders will cut the wood better than the younger ones. So now the younger ones learn, oh, we need to depend upon the older ones. We need the strength of the older ones, right? Everything is put back into order in nature the way it's supposed to be. The kid doesn't have to think, you know what? I played these video games. I can do way better than my dad in video games. And so 
the temptation is less. Because why? Because when you're living in nature, you are concerned about basic needs. And as and it's like fasting. Fasting stops you from temptation. When you are living at the level of survival, in its truest sense of, okay, what food are you, you're, you're spending hours and hours on basic things, like, okay, preparing food for everyone. That's going to take a few hours to do. Okay, it's not like a microwave, you press one button and you're done. And the rest of the time now you have nothing to do, so you're going to be dealing with your temptations. And so you're not living in a place where, you know, and this is what I was trying to say, is that there's a difference between modern cities versus cities, pre-modern cities. Because now you can go to a grocery store and buy milk, that's fine, but you never see the cow. You never see the hen that gives you the eggs. And you never see the ban bananas, how they really came from the tree. And you never experience the medicine of trees. You never experience the scent of the tree. And you never sit under the cosmos, pondering upon Allah, a direct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in nature. And then when you are in that situation, right? When you're in that natural situation, to think about Allah is just natural. You're looking at the whole universe and its beauty, right? And I always say beauty is never an accident. That same flower that's beautiful is the same flower that gives you medicine, is the same flower that can be used for food, is the same flower that can be used for so many other things like giving yourself good smell, so on and so forth. This, when you're living in this type of environment that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's so, you have to try hard to sin. And when you're in the city, you have to try hard not to sin. Right? Over there, it's so easy to do good deeds. When you're, in, when you're outside the city. Really, wallahi, this, uh, this past few days when I was in the camp, I was observing myself and others. Right? I know that if I'm at home and we're asking the kids to pray, how hard it is. And how easy it was in the camp. You know, you give children a command or ask them to do something inside the houses, in the, in the cities, right? See how hard it is. Go to the camping site, go outside, go into nature and tell them what to do and see how they listen to you. You'll see that the, say, the shaitan's uh, control over the kids dissipates. The effect of magic seems to dissipate. In fact, now I think I've, you know, after this experience, I was thinking that we should do ruqya in outside the cities. That will make ruqya a lot more effective. Ruqya will be more effective in reading Quran and people will be more effective if you do it outside the cities. Which reminds me that I'm holding a course in Arabic language. You'll say, see the information, inshallah, in the comment section. I'm also going to start a course in ruqya, how to do ruqya. Um... I will probably send out the details for that on Wednesday or Thursday, inshallah. Okay, so now uh, my Arabic course, please take that because one of the base, because the most beautiful experience you can have is to be in nature and also be listening to Quran. To be in nature and listen to Quran, and then it's like the Quran's talking about nature and history, and, and your your mind is is in harmony with the universe. But I was talking about. You know, in people saw, okay, this milk is coming from this camel. Or this milk is coming from this cow. And this cow, we also use it for meat. We also use it for milk. We also use its hide. We also, every part of the body of a cow you can use. You can use it to move things, to plow the, plow the farms, to put load on it. Everything Allah made has, is multifunctional and beautiful. Everything Allah made is multifunctional and beautiful. Okay, Water outside the city, much more effective in terms of how you feel after doing wudu. In terms of the effect it has on magic and evil eye and the shayateen. Okay, And so the every city is a sin city and every city is in a state. You know where it is what? Every city is in a state of sin. And Allah is saying, Immin qariyatin nahnu mahlikuha. Allah is talking about the cities we live in today. There's not one city except we will destroy it 
قبل يوم القيامة before the day of judgment أو معذبوا هذابا شديدا or give it a severe punishment the sins that are in the cities the human trafficking that goes on the, the level of domestic violence that goes on every type of uh, sexual abuse that goes on the all these sins across the board that people are involved in in the cities okay the people what's outside in nature in in the near the trees and near the mountains and near the hills you'll be in an environment that is pure from this you know i'll give you an example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran yawma tubaddul al-ard ghayra al-ard was samawat wal ard allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the day of judgment will occur when allah changes the earth to another earth يَوْمَ تُبَدُّلُ الْأَرْضِ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ The earth will become a different earth. Why? Some of the scholars like Imam Ibn Hajar, they said, the earth will become another earth because Allah will not do justice. Allah will not bring justice upon the earth, the very earth that what? That had the injustices there. No, it has to be cleaned. Right? The earth has to be cleaned and then the justice will be done there. So, you don't build you don't build a masjid on stolen land. You don't build a masjid or you don't try to apply Islam on something that has a very wrong foundation to begin with. Which is why you have to get ready for hijrah. Because there will be no city except it will be turned into into a dustbin. Into a dustbin. And those times are coming and we better get ready. And we better get ready for hijrah. And we have to start from ourselves. And we have to realize and we have to start forming a jama'ah. And every person should look for somebody better than them. And everyone should spend some time learning their deen every day. And everyone should spend time with their jama'ah. And find people better than you. And as a jama'ah, leave the city once a month, once, you know, every month or so. Go out and 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 go to the outside the city and see how easy it is to practice the deen how easy it is to practice the deen of islam outside the city how easy it is to wake up for prayer how easy it is to wake up for fajr how easy it is for even children to obey their parents how easy it is to do uh, to break magic outside the cities in nature just go to a place where there's all nature, where people haven't sinned, where people, your neighbors are not sinning. and Because when a person sins, the whole environment, up to 40 houses, sometimes get affected. And so we have to, and you know, don't quote me on the 40 houses. There are some narrations about this. I'm not sure about its authenticity, but my point is correct, which is that if a place is dirty, you can't do something good there. Okay, and if you do it, its effectiveness will be minimal. And so, it is very, very important that we realize that the city life is a life that that is made for sin. The modern city life is made to sin, to be in temptation. The modern city life is made for falling into temptation. And so, you make the tall buildings like Fir'aun tried to make a building tall, you know, like all these Fir'aunic modeled, they, they want to make, you know, cities and tall buildings and all this, this, this satanic world of tall buildings uh, is a world that is not conducive for our children. And so the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the mother will give birth to her master. Meaning, one of the meanings is, there are other meanings too, but one of the meanings and the common meaning is that the child will treat the parents like a slave. Until you take your children outside the city. Anyone who's having marriage problems, anyone who's having children problems, anyone who's having magic problems, anyone who's having psychological problems, anyone who's having any problems, start going outside the city with your family, with your spouse. Take them outside the city and see how things begin to change and do things together outside the city. Outside the city. 
ask yourself, why are the, the Amish, they don't know the deen, they don't have the guidance, but why are they they're the happiest people in the world? Why are they so successful? Okay, in, 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 in dealing with each other, in taking care of each other, they're outside the city, right? And so there is something very, very, uh, very sinister about the position these cities are in that we live in today. Okay, there's something very, very sinister about the, and the only animals they allow, like the dogs, are the ones the angels don't like. And the, the animals that the angels do like, they don't allow, it's not even legal to have chickens or the other animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, and the, the deen prefers. They don't want those animals in your house. But a dog you can have. And not that there's something wrong with a dog per se, but I'm just saying the direction, in, the overall direction in which things are going. And so, form a, form a jama'ah. Look for somebody better than you. Gather 10 people or more, 5 people, 10 people, 7 people, and form a jama'ah and get ready to make your hijrah. Get ready to make your hijrah. And one way to do it is every month, spend a few days outside the city. Every month, spend a few days outside the city. And do this consistently for a while and you'll see the effect it has on you. You'll see the effect it has on you. And so... Inshallah Ta'ala, I just want to end by saying every city is a sin city. And cities, there was a brother in one of my YouTube channels and in the comment section he wrote this. I really loved it, right? And I, I, want, I was looking for the comment section again because I wanted to read it to you guys. I, I couldn't find it. But anyway, this brother, he wrote, you know, that cities have been made to promote atheism and godlessness and to not care. And to only care about yourself, right? There's something about this city life, and I can't put my finger on exactly what are the elements of that that are so different from when you're outside the city, that it is so easy to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outside the city, that sin, these cities are every single one of these major cities, from Islamabad to Tokyo to Washington DC to New York, all of these major world cities, they're like sin cities. And they're just waiting to be destroyed. And, you know, they're all interconnected through this wiring, right, called the internet. And the Prophet calls, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, Bayt al ankabut it's like the house of the spider, like one big web that's so easy to break. And that's what's going to happen. Your money will, and everything will go away once the internet, boom, one day it'll be gone. And you'll be in the dark. And if, you don't, if you're not prepared to make hijrah at that time of chaos, because all it's going to take is one war. Okay. And all it's going to take is, uh, is, is very basic things. Somebody, anyone who's preparing for war, any big country like China or Russia, all they have to do is cut the internet cable lines. And then everyone's blind after that. Everyone's blind after that. All your crypto money on the internet, gone. Your PayPal money, gone. All of that is gone. And that's the direction we're headed in. That's the direction, that, because that's the direction sin takes you. And even for the individual who wants to be good, it's hard to be good. Until, so you have to plan your hijrah. You have to plan your way out of the cities. So I just wanted to leave this, inshallah, for today. Please share with me what you, why you think sin these cities are it's so hard to do uh, or, or why do cities have this effect in terms of parenting why do cities have this effect in terms of magic why do these cities have this effect in terms of uh, marriages compared to outside the city tell me what you think about that jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa